you'll have to forgive me folks just uh, finish off enjoying a nice gammon sandwich but welcome along to the next installment of our team chase liner f1 2020 my team career mode and we've got a few things to do before we head to the mid-season break basically where we shut down the factory for a few months well a few weeks actually and we just you know have some fun but uh, before we do that we're going to go and uh do a few uh, little odds and sods, make sure we got something uh, nice to come back to uh, before the end of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, before the end next uh, Grand Prix in Spa. Uh, what have we got? We've got no uh, resource points to spend, that's fine, we've got all that there, all of that is sorted, that's no problem. So, I think if that's the case... Look at the championship. And Lewis Hamilton leads the way from Max Verstappen, Valtteri Bottas, Sebastian Vettel, Charles Leclerc, Jackie in P6. Loving it, girl. Loving it. Uh, followed by Alex Albon, Carlos Sainz, Danny Ricciardo and Sergio Perez. Your top ten in the constructors. Mercedes running away with it from Ferrari. Then Red Bull, McLaren, Chase Line now in fifth. Chase the McLarens down. And then Racing Point, Renault, Alfa Romeo, Alfa Tauri, Williams and Haas at the very bottom of the tree. We're still yet to score Roman Grosjean, George Russell and Tatiana Calderon. So we got one durability upgrade, lovely. Got the supply HQ tour stuff, got the driver of promotion filming, got the general durability. So we're going to go to this press interview and then uh, it's time for the mid-season break, folks. I wonder what uh, that's going to have in store for us. Well, it's great to be back at your headquarters and got to say an awful lot's changed since we were last here let's dive in with some questions your team's had their first win in formula one is this a sign of things to come well i gotta say that this was a strange question to start with there uh will but um we've had two wins actually one was luck and one was outright pace what do we think put it down to i've got to say we've got to put it down to that engine i'm afraid your second driver really seems to be improving at a rapid pace how dedicated are they? Now this I thought was a strange question because Tatiana's not really improved that much if uh, we've been like she's still hanging around the back of the grid. She got one lucky result at Monza. Hmm. At the moment you seem to be a solid mid-tier team. What do you think will take your team to the next level? Another good question there from Will Buxton. What will take us from the mid-tier to challenge the likes of Red Bull, Ferrari and Mercedes? I don't know. You've got to think it's going to be chassis, I think. Would it be safe to say that in terms of team orders, your career comes first in your team? Well, we answered this on behalf of Jackie the last time and we said no. There are absolutely no team orders at this team. Do you see your relationship with your second driver being long term or will you be looking for someone else if you're successful? We're seeing it as long term for the moment, but she's on thin ice as far as I'm concerned. She's not giving the results uh, that Jackie is giving, but she needs to give good results. Well, thanks so much as ever for your time. It's hugely appreciated. Uh, well, of course, our margins are looking good, Carl. Don't worry about that. I worry about that, so you don't have to. There's no messages. There's no activities. So... With that being said, we've done all we need to do. It's time to... Well, I think we can probably upgrade something here. Get it to... Uh, well, maybe, I don't know. Maybe upgrade some on the aero uh, department. Because they've been feeling a little left out. So I think it may be time to get this resource point generation from them. Or maybe the build time. I haven't a clue. One of the two. We've got uh, loads that we uh, we could go after. I mean, we could even go big and upgrade the analysis suite if we uh, felt like it. <coughs> but I think next uh, next up is going to be that marketing one. I think that's going to be next uh, for us as a team. That uh, that I would certainly uh, imagine. Although, when I say fabrication, maybe. It, it's all about ifs, buts and maybes with uh, my team. So we're going to go purchase quality control. I think we can uh, afford to do that. No problem. That'll come in afterwards. We're going to advance the time now. Season break, as there isn't another race for a while. We will be closing down Team HQ until next race weekend. And they are just like that. <laughs> we're back open for business. <laughs> and 
and we can stick in another activity just in time for the Belgian Grand Prix. You love to see the activities for the Belgian Grand Prix, don't you? It's only two days, so I wonder what it could be. Maybe the Aero Team building. <laughs> Why not? Why not uh, there, folks? That's uh, all that needs to be said and all that needs to be... Uh, all that needs to be done. <clears throat> and we got 2.3 million in the bank. So while we're at it, we may as well go ahead and get this build time upgrade for the uh, chassis department uh, eventually. Or maybe go after the uh, resource regeneration point. Yeah, we'll go after the resource regeneration points. We're down to 300k. 300k, Jackie and Tatiana will make that back no problem. Spa's a funny track anyway. So we're going to get practiced, we're going to get qualified, and we will see you, hopefully, with some rain around uh, the Arden Forest. We'll see you in a bit, folks. We're in Belgium once again for today's round of the Formula One World Championship. It's a race the great Ayrton Senna won six times, and in 2019, Charles Leclerc became the first driver to take their maiden win here since Michael Schumacher in 1992. Spa-Francorchamps then, a 4.35 mile tour of the Ardennes countryside, with nine right corners and ten left corners, giving us a grand total of 19. Average lap speeds in the dry can reach about 145 miles per hour, but without a significant improvement in these conditions, we won't be seeing anything like that today. And as always, a man with plenty of racing experience joins me in the commentary box. Today, it's Anthony Davidson. Tell me, Anthony, you're no stranger to surviving the melee of turn one. So how do you keep out of trouble when there's so much going on around you? There are three main things to worry about there, Crofty. Positioning, awareness, and discipline. First, you have to put your car in a bit of space and make sure you have room to react to what the others are doing. Then you have to watch your mirrors and listen to the sounds around you to get a sense of where everyone is. And finally, just don't get too greedy. Just because a gap exists doesn't always mean you should go for it. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Midas lines up on pole position, with Sebastian Vettel starting alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Leclerc, Hamilton, Max Verstappen and Albon. Ricardo, Sainz, Perez, and Valtteri Bottas. Stroll, Raikkonen, Daniel Kvyat, and Giovinazzi. Grosjean, Gasly, Esteban Ocon, and Lando Norris. Magnussen, Russell, Latifi, and Tatiana Kolderov. Which of these talented drivers will come out on top today? We're in a great position to bring some points home today. Let's make it happen. And our prayers have been answered because here we are at Spa and you will notice Jackie got pole. She hooked up a lap, folks, and I mean a lap. And with our rain pace as well, that's going to just, oh my god, this car's going to be unstoppable. If we don't win this race, we're unfortunate today. But it's going to be a one, no stop actually. Although the rain does ease later uh, in the race it may become dry so we may get some uh, may get some dry running but we'll see what happens folks we're not going to make any promises here from the front row from pole position can Jackie Levine bring it home and try and do um, what a lot of people tend to do around Spa be successful <laughs> Lights out, and away we go. Excellent start by Jackie. She's off down into last source for the first time. She's got a very decent start, actually. We can't uh, fault that from pole position. This rain is going to be an absolute nightmare. They're two by two behind her as they head down to uh, Eau Rouge and Radion for the first time. And you can see the spray is just being kicked up here in Belgium. It is an absolute nightmare for anyone but... Uh, this is where the problem's going to be because the straights are the problem, folks. And you see that uh, Charles Leclerc is having a look around the outside. So is uh, Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton, but uh, Jackie's going to race steadfast. I think that's uh, going to be... Oh, is that Hamilton? I think that might be Hamilton. I think that might be Hamilton. He's having a look around the inside. Actually, no, that's uh, Sebastian Vettel, isn't it? 
in P3. A little deep into the uh, Brussels hairpin. Uh, but we're already under the safety car conditions. What the hell's gone on here? Why are they showing Tatiana? Don't do it, Tatiana. Are you going to lose it on the Kevel straight? Oh, oh, she's lost it. Oh, my God. There are no words. So here we are, we're ready to go back uh, under restart here. Well, Jackie's going to lead them to the restart here on lap three. So it'll be to start lap number four here. As uh, she leads off Lewis Hamilton, Sebastian Vettel. Uh, who's behind Sebastian Vettel? I think that's Charles Leclerc. You, you can't see it. Yeah, Charles Leclerc. You can't see anything in the spray here. A lot of people are on the wrong tyres here. I think some have gone on the wets. Some are on the intermediate. Well, actually, no, we're all on the wets. It's uh, the intermediate that uh, we're going to transfer onto. And who knows, maybe we transfer onto a, a set of dries if uh, we're very lucky. But uh, through the bus stop chicane. And Jackie is gone, folks. She is gone. The safety car is in. So we're back uh, underway as Lewis Hamilton looks at the outside of the last horse already. There may have been a bit of contact there between uh, Hamilton and Jackie. We'll uh, have to see if anything comes that, but down to Eau Rouge. And Hamilton is squirreling all over the place. He's still squirreling. Jesus Christ, he's, that is uh, some good uh, momentum there. And now Vettel is squirreling. They're all squirreling and struggling down the, the Kevel Strait. We're going to end up with another safety car in a second here as uh, Vettel leads him down into Lake Com with Malmody uh, literally right behind it. So it looks like Vettel's got ahead of Hamilton. Is Leclerc going to get ahead of Hamilton? I think he's not. No, he's not. But that, that McLaren there is doing uh, absolute bits there as we move uh, forward here onto the uh, towards the end of uh, the lapper and Vettel is looking to the outside of Jackie in the bus stop chicane. Oh, dear me. I tell you what. Oh, I think Leclerc was coming to uh, try to get Hamilton there at some point. But it just uh, wasn't happening. Look at all these fastest laps coming in. Who's setting the fastest lap here? Somebody said Lando Norris is the fastest car on the track. If you can believe Lando Norris is the fastest car on the track. You may not believe Lando Norris is the fastest car on the track. But uh, believe me, folks, it actually happened. As uh, we head... Uh, oh, no, now this is towards the end of lap uh, five. And Sebastian Vettel is the first car to blink onto the uh, onto the intermediates so this is going to be an interesting uh, strategy let's see what uh, let's see what he does here it'd be interesting to keep an eye on uh, his times here see how he and uh, look at all of the uh, racing points is also coming on to the intermediates as well so that's uh, this is an interesting strategy here they're coming off the wets early but uh, while that was uh, going on, Jackie is still out there, folks. She's still out there. Plumbing her way. Hamilton's in P2 and Hamilton's losing it! Oh, Hamilton's in the grass! I think Hamilton's hit the wall! The, the mistakes that the AI are making are incredible. Let's have another look at it from Hamilton here. He's coming down. You can see he's losing it. He's gained it and they lose it again. Yes, he's done the exact same thing Tatiana did. And there goes Leclerc into uh into p2 and while that was all kicking off lando norris two weeks in a row he's retiring from uh, a grand prix nice to know where's he gonna park up well that's a safety car surely but nope it's not a safety car and charles leclerc really wants to get past uh Jackie here in the worst way, but uh, we're not going to take a, any chance here. We're going to come in and get these uh, intermediates on. I want Jackie to come in and get the intermediates uh, on right now. So Charles Leclerc is going to take the race lead. He's going to have to switch on to the intermediates eventually. I think Verstappen uh, has gone through as well as uh, Jackie comes into the uh, pits here. So we've got a yellow flag behind us. I wonder who uh, that's going to be for. There's green, yeah, there's yellow flags uh, going down uh, the main straight here. So, and we're looking at the uh, Mercedes stop. And while we are, Hamilton's in there for his front wing change. 
So I suppose it's good that uh, we've seen that. But uh, here Jackie comes and she's going to come out in front of Sebastian Vettel by a mile. By a mile. The only problem is you've got a fast Kevin Magnussen coming up right behind her. Uh, you don't want the fast Kevin Magnussen coming up behind you. Watch uh, Sebastian Vettel behind Kevin Magnussen. He might uh, try something down the Kevin straight here. He's uh, looking one way, looking the other way. He's going to go to the outside of Kevin Magnussen. This is, uh, for at the moment, for P3. But uh, it could be for the race lead. We'll uh, have to wait and see. And here's the... Oh, dear me! That's the reason for the yellow flag. Nicholas Latifi has just piled into the back of... Well, I presume that's uh, Kevin Magnussen, because there's uh, Sebastian Vettel. Actually, we should be thanking uh, Latifi there for holding up Sebastian Vettel a little bit. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. It's greatly appreciated. Canadian, uh, my Canadian friend. And he's going to go park it at the edge of Las Horse, which should be a safety car. But uh, it's not going to be a safety car. And we're just going to keep on going, folks, as uh, Jackie is still under attack from Vettel. He's going to go to the outside of the bus stop chicane. Oh, you have to wake up. Oh, he's lost a bit of wing! You see that piece of wing fly, fly off? I tell you what, this is becoming a race of attrition here. Wings are flying left, right and centre. So Jackie's into P3. The only two cars yet to pit are Charles Leclerc and uh, Max Verstappen. They're the only two who have yet to pit here. And they're still on their wet tyres that they started the uh, race on. I hope they're not going to the end of the Grand Prix here. Because that would not be a way to... Uh, that would not be a way to uh, start this uh, race off. Because Jackie was in an absolute storming position. And speaking of storming position, it looks like Vettel... Roy oh, squirreling on the Kemmel straight! Oh, I tell you what. The Kemmel straight is absolutely treacherous today. Anyone that uh, thinks of passing may better make a clean pass. There may be a clean pass for the better as uh, we see Danny Kvyat with uh, Roman Grosjean. This is for P14. And uh, I think the Russian is going to go around the outside. The outside is always the better traction uh, in the wet. Don't ask me why. It always has been. It's good racing here between the uh, the Haas and the uh, Alpha Towery. Still around the outside will go uh, Danny Kivia on the, in Brussels hairpin up to Liège corner. And I think he's going to get the job done on the traction, is he? Yes, he will. But uh, Grosjean is still there. And uh, he's got him. In fact, you've got all three Frenchmen there in the line, and this is why, because Esteban Ocon is going to go past uh, the other, so the Williams here, and George Russell, the only Williams left in the race, P16. And that's a uh, textbook around the outside of Lake Com. He should get the job done under traction that and Malmody. And he will get the job done as well as he heads down to the Brussels hairpin and move into P16. But we're going to move towards the end of lap number eight here. And still Jackie's in third place. Still Verstappen and Leclerc have yet to pit. Could the two in front please come off their wet tyres and pit onto the faster intermediate tyres? As Jackie's just about to prove, but then Vettel just proves that uh, he's uh, going a little faster. I think Jackie is going fast. He's uh, bringing Sebastian. Alex Albon there. Wow! What a lap from Albon in clean air as well. We may be beating Albon on the track, but we're certainly not beating Albon uh, for pace this weekend as Jackie almost loses it out of uh, out of the Eau Rouge. But down the Kemmel straight they go. Sebastian Vettel, oh, he's still squirming on the Kemmel straight. And I tell you what, look at the car that's coming up close behind. That's Hollywood Lance Stroll, folks. He's coming uh, thick and fast as we come out of the uh, bus stop on lap number 9 to start lap number 10. And uh, apparently they're saying Vettel is uh, dropping back, but let me assure you, Vettel is not dropping back. And uh, Leclerc and Verstappen have not pitted yet. So it looks like they're going to try to go to the end of the race on their wet tyres. We have been finessed, for a lack of a better word. There you are, I've nicked the word off Arava. We have been finessed by, by Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen. But then again, we have to come in for the intermediates to cover off uh, Sebastian. We thought we made the right move, and it turns out that the move was the wrong one. Which uh, was rather unfortunate, as we see uh, Grosjean and Ocon here. Now, some, 
I don't know where I think Gasly has disappeared up uh, up the road here. So uh, Gro 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 I'll get his name in a bit. Grosjean's been holding Ocon up and move uh, Roman Grosjean up uh, to P. Well, down to P16. Ocon up to P15 as Jackie goes into uh, Poo on corner. But this is now coming to start the last lap of the Grand Prix, and you can see there they haven't pitted. They're losing chunks of time and they haven't pitted. Alex Albon with another fastest lap of the Grand Prix. He's coming quickly, folks. But uh, it's not going to be quick enough. I don't think Jackie's going to have the better of Alexander Albon this weekend. So she's going to hopefully gain some uh, positions on him in the uh, in the championship stakes. Sebastian doesn't look like he's uh, close. Oh, he's getting closer, though. I don't know if he's uh, going to be close enough to have a go in the uh, late con. <clears throat> but uh, look, no, he's not. He's going to uh, be forced now to stay in P4. Jackie's going to be P3 here. She she is a wet weather maestro here. As uh, we go to George Russell, who's got uh, the red lights blinking on, so he must be uh, harvesting energy here. Kimi Raikkonen uh, right behind him in P18. He's looking to get to P17. Here's how that squirm move should be done. That is a uh, textbook squirm in there, and you saw uh, how textbook it is. You go around the outside of Malmody. Still side by side, which is a great action to see here. Even though this is uh, for P17, it just shows every position counts in a Grand Prix. you got Kevin Magnussen right behind uh, Kimi Raikkonen there, and Kimi's going to take P17 with the greatest of ease there. Thank you very much, says the Iceman. George Russell thinking about a look uh, to poo on, but that's not going to happen as we go to probably the jabbiest bastard in Belgium right now. Charles Leclerc is going to come out the bus stop chicane, folks, and he's going to win the Belgian Grand Prix. Jabby bastard! As uh, Jimmy Little would have said, Jabby bastard! So there you go, Charles Leclerc wins, so Verstappen's going to be P2. Jackie's going to hold on, though, out of the uh, bus stop chicane. She got the job done. It's not the win that uh, the pace demanded, but uh, without those two at the front, I think it would have been P3. We'll definitely take that today. Top job, my friend. Top job. I was a bit worried about this one at the start of the weekend, but you've pulled through. Thank you. Absolutely top job. Driver of the day, Hollywood Land Stroll. He looks uh, impressive being named driver of the day, don't he? Many doubted whether they could pull off the win here at Spa Francorchamps, but they've done so in spectacular style. So, Anthony, what made the difference out there today? Well, keeping their tyre temperatures up in the tricky wet conditions was really important. There's not much grip out there at the best of times, and it's ten times worse if you're out there on cold tyres. So the way they kept the rubber in its proper operating window was a huge advantage today. Looking at the podium, you can see that red suit familiar to fans across the globe. A world-class win for a world-class team. Ferrari do it again. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. It wasn't the best weekend for our championship leader, and their advantage at the top has been reduced. After an incredible day of racing, who was your driver of the day, Ant? Lance Stroll certainly put in an impressive performance today. No doubt his team and fans are extremely proud. Let's move on to the constructors. The lead at the top comes down after a strong weekend from the challenging pack. Well, Ant, an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one. Um, before anyone asks, no, you don't get a little bit of the bubbly but because you just, get, uh, just because Jackie's on the podium. You only get it when she wins. But jammy bastards, Charles Leclerc and Max Verstappen wins the Belgian Grand Prix. Max Verstappen, you know, Jackie finishes uh, P3. P3 on the podium is still a fantastic, fantastic result. I'm sure you'll agree. Sebastian Vettel, Lance Stroll, Alex Albon, Carlos Sainz, Daniel Ricciardo, Valtteri Bottas, Sergio Perez, your top 10. 
<sighs> Lewis Hamilton finished 13th. Wow. We're not going to talk about it, Tatiana. You've had a new contract and this is three piss poor results in a row. We're going to have to have a word about this. We're going to have to have a word about this very quickly. Because uh, that's not what we expect here at Chase Liner. So, uh, yeah. Let's go see Claire. Uh, well, no interview questions from Claire there. And uh, I'm, I think, to be honest, uh, for the best. Because I'm royally peeved. I think uh, our girl there should have won that race. Uh, Leclerc and Verstappen got very lucky with, uh, with how they uh, worked. 11 uh, acclaim working up uh, towards level 12 acclaim. Jackie uh, Jackie did well there. So did... Well, we're not going to talk about Tatiana. <clears throat> yeah, look away, Tats. The fact that you cost us $37,500 with that stupid spin. Urgh, you're frustrating at times. Yeah, and you can't, uh, you can't see under me, but we got worn components on the car. But that's fine. We can change them all out and... Uh, do what needs to be uh, do what needs to be done. But well, we've got two days before the Italian Grand Prix. What should we do? Should we get Tatiana better, or should we celebrate the podium? It's going to boost the morale of everyone, but it's going to cost us. You know what? Let's have let's have a good old fashioned a good old fashioned. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, let's throw a party. Let's, let's throw a party, shall we? It's going to cost us 15k to throw a party, but let's throw that bloody party, because look, why not? Let's throw a party. Tatiana's not invited, though. No. Okay, Tatiana's invited. Got to keep the Colombians happy. Tatiana is invited to the party. So, we're going to look at another upgrade, and I see one we can go after straight away, which will open up a few more upgrades for the aero department, and that is this uh, minor barge board uh, drag reduction de uh, development. Be in for the Singapore Grand Prix? The perfect Grand Prix for it to come in for. The perfect Grand Prix. Get Italy out of the way, we can get this one in and get it in before Singapore. Fantastic timing. But guys, let's get... 25 likes on the video if we could uh, be so kind. Can we do it? I know we can. We hit our target practically every single time. And you can get subscribed for more, even more, F1 2020, my team, Korea Mo, NASCAR, he 4 Bus Simulator on Saturdays, or whatever we decide to play on Sundays, which is generally absolutely anything at the moment. Uh, we'll see you next time for the Italian Grand Prix around Monza. Can we piss on Ferrari's parade, or will it be another shit show? Find out next time. Goodbye, folks.